I've been receiving a lot of messages that they see their aunts, their grandmothers, and their moms in Abigail. She's basically a woman who wasn't really born with advan the advantages in life, you know, really working hard to provide herself with a better life and no one else to depend on when it comes to that. A very independent woman who, who's able to take care of herself. She's Asian, for sure. I mean, that's one of the reasons what drew me to her because that's what we have in common, obviously. Um, she's also, you know, um, resilient and relentless. She, nothing will stop her from... Um, doing things, not necessarily, I would say, her way, but doing things which she perceives as right or the right way to do it. She's um, fearless and courageous and everything I aspire to be, actually. Yeah, it's always fun to play someone who's, you know, so much better than you and, and so much more powerful than yourself. <laughs> There's 1.7 million workers all over the world, Filipino workers all over the world, so I felt like they would see themselves while watching the film and I wanted to make sure that I would do right by them and you know do justice to them because they've done so much for the country and so much for their families. You know, to be able to give a voice to their plight, I felt that that was very important because there, you know, there are unsung heroes. That's one thing that really drew me to the character that she'd be able to inspire Filipinos and other people who are, you know, who feel that they're at a disadvantage in this world. Ruben really had uh, a Filipina in mind to cast as Abigail, but he was also very open to casting Latinas and other ethnicities. Um, yeah, we did talk about that, and he did mention that he was very much exposed to their world, you know, the OFW's world. He sent his casting director to the Philippines uh, to, to search for an actress to play Abigail. It would have been also interesting if he had searched right here in the U.S. because there are a lot of, you know, working Filipino actresses who are very talented and uh, who have been really dying to break through. So that would have been, well now everyone knows, you can find Filipino talent all over the world. I was born and raised there, I work there, I live there. Um, so yeah, the casting director flew to the Philippines, they held auditions there, and she would make a selection from the footage that she would gather in a day and send them all to Ruben. I did that Carl and Abigail scene so playfully and so flirtatiously. And I was doing it with the casting director, Pauline, Pauline Hansen, and I just had fun with it. And I was really, you know, doing a lot of flirting with Pauline, and that's what he saw, I suppose, that I could just have fun with the character. And I think that's what he was looking for, like a, a little flavor of fun, not too serious, and not pushing the comedy too much as well. It looks paid for the tickets. Not bad, huh? <laughs> so what do you do? I sell shit. The success of a luxury cruise mainly depends on you. I don't want to hear anybody saying no. It's always, yes sir, yes ma'am. I command you, enjoy the moment. No. No? No. <laughs> what? You say no to me? No, no. Oh, so it's yes? Uh, yeah, no. Yes? Oh yeah, yes! <laughs> He didn't really give me a backstory. It was more of he told me what Abigail should be able to do. Like she should be able to know how to fish. He sent me videos on how people fish with their bare hands. He said that Abigail should know how to build a fire. She should, of course, know how to cook. So those were the three things that he was very specific about. So based on all three, that's when I started having to work on my on the backstory of Abigail because first of all, I, I don't know how to fish, you know. I mean, at least not with my bare hands. <laughs> I can build a fire. It's not like every Filipino can build a fire. So I had to find the justification of why Abigail can do all those things. This is a really huge statement on what a certain amount of power can do to a person regardless of their status in life. If they suddenly have this skill that no one else that does, suddenly they're holding, you know, the trident, they're, they're, they're queen, and no one else can take it away from, from that person, from Abigail. Despite the fact that she's a woman, that she's Asian, that she is middle-aged, but because she has that skill. The sails. Do you think it's possible to wash them? I don't think that's possible, ma'am, because this is a motorized vessel. Yeah. So we don't have any sails. It was sails. Yes. Well then, in that case, we will 
clean the sails. Yes. Of course. Yes. When he chose me, I flew to Sweden and we did a workshop um, between him and I, you know, uh, without a camera, just us discussing the scene and he would ask questions. Do you think Abigail would say this in this scene? Maybe let's try this. So we, we did a lot of improvisation. I think we did that for about four hours. And then when we flew to, to Greece to shoot the island scenes, I did a, a, another improv with Harris Dickinson, the actor who plays Carl. We did that. Um, in Ruben's room and we did that for probably about two hours and that also involved a lot of discussion. Up to the time when we started filming, there were still more discussions right before the day per scene that we were doing. There was always discussions and that's his method. I would probably liken him to a farmer. He likes to gather a lot of you know resources and make a delicious recipe of something that's really delicious to digest. And he, he gathers all of that from everyone around him, from his entire team. It's not a dictatorship at all. It's a collaboration. You know, he really welcomes um, people's feedback and input, and that really gives for a very rich and creative process. He, he works us very hard. He pushes us to the limit, and he really tests us. But at the same time, he, he guides us very well, and he makes sure that, you know, we're all protected and, and we feel safe. He tests our patience because he makes us do so many takes. And then later on, you know, when we were when we saw each other again, uh, two years later after filming, I asked him, "So, why did you really do that?" I found out he wanted to actually have different choices when he was editing. Every take, we would always have fun with it. You know, when you're doing something repetitive over and over again, you get bored with it. So I would just end up playing per take and just adding things and the other actors would also do the same thing and he would see that. That made it more exciting for him to edit and to select the the, scene, the takes that he would use. And one example of that is um, the scene with uh, Carl and Abigail where she sprays his mouth with Evian, her mouth and then his mouth. That's because I was really thirsty and I only did that once. And he said, keep doing it, keep doing it because he, he liked it. So it's, it's nice to work with a director like that who's not confined by a box and not stuck on his own head, in his own head and with his own ideas. He's very open. I think this applies to the entire cast. We were all really looking out for each other and we really wanted to come up with the best work that we can create while we were there. So all of us were just, we were just in the moment. And I think that's also very reflective of Ruben's style. It's his style that doing it over and over again, you, you can't help but end up being very organic and just truthful. There's no other way to go. To love. A Russian capitalist <laughs> and an American communist. Oh. On a $250 million luxury yacht. She really put so much depth into the character of Yaya. She plays a really uh, special kind of model in this film. Not just your ordinary kind of model, not the stereotypical kind of beautiful woman. And this is for her first breakout role. And, but she, and, and she did so good. It's like she's been doing it for so many years. And more than that, she's re she was really sweet, kind, graceful, gentle, thoughtful. Actually, I've never met anyone like her, and I don't think I ever will. What the really bad. This is really, really bad. Especially while we were filming, the pressure was really hard. Um, it was really, uh, I was terrified because I didn't want to misrepresent us Filipinos. I didn't want to represent our workers abroad. I didn't want them to think that I was making fun of them or I was making light of their jobs. That's the strength that you see in Abigail because I really had to work hard and push that hard to show that she's a woman of power She's and she's using it, you know, with elegance and grace. I wanted that to come out because I wanted the Filipinos to be proud and not just Filipinos, also other ethnicities who are in the service industry to have a sense of pride and to see a reflection of themselves, of someone who is true and, and you know, and, and real and not someone who is 
uh, a caricature or someone who is just made up. I really tried to make her as, uh, as human as possible so that people can relate to her and not to see her as a butt of jokes. Tita is an uh, aunt in Filipino and that means uh, usually the aunts in Filipino families, they're the you know, they have such strong personalities, always trying to control everything, which food is served, what to wear, to hear mass every Sunday. And I've been receiving a lot of messages that they see their aunts, their grandmothers, and their moms in Abigail. So that's called the tita moves. Yeah, she's got the tita moves. I feel like I have the entire nation behind me. Like I have everyone with me. Not just Filipinos who live in the Philippines, but also Filipinos all over the world, and not even just Filipinos. Everyone who feels that maybe they're part of a minority group and who want to be heard. I feel like I have them all with me and I am not doing this alone and I feel so much love and it's very special this whole thing actually. There's this uh, belief in the Philippines, it's called crab mentality. You know how there's a bucket full of crabs and they're trying to escape but instead of helping each other out, they pull each other down. So one is already about to leave and one crab is pulling. Filipinos in general think that it's a huge part of our culture, crab mentality. In my experience now, I don't see that at all. We're actually lifting everyone up right now and that feels so good because it's about time that we all help each other and lift each other up, edify each other rather than pull each other down. And this goes for everyone, not just us Pinoy's, but everybody who feels they're at a disadvantage.